bring you some black excellence today. We have an exclusive interview with an author, a professor, a civil rights leader. There's just not enough words to describe our next guest. He has a long list of accomplishments uh, that we are excited to talk to him about. Uh, we are going to welcome in a provocative intellectual and voice for the black community, Dr. Cornell West. Welcome, Dr. West, to BNC. I want to thank you so very much, and I want to salute you, my dear sister Laverne McGee, and BNC for being such forces for good in this world. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. We are excited to have you here. Uh, like I said, there's just no words to describe everything you have uh, contributed to society in general. But I want to start with talking about COVID and the president. Uh, he gave an address last night to the nation. I'd like to get your reaction to that. I think the relief bill is a very important contribution to alleviating a lot of the suffering and the social misery in this country and especially on chocolate sides of this country and black communities. Uh, we should remember though, my dear sister, that it was black people who put him in. The majority of white brothers and sisters voted for a neo-fascist gangster named Trump. And if, if it were not for black votes, especially black sisters votes, Biden would not be there. And of course, Sister Harris wouldn't be there either. But the fact that he's decided to come through and try to put working class and poor people uh, um, near the center of this policy, as you know, 50% of child poverty is going to be cut in half. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. I come from a biblical tradition that says you got to focus on the least of these, the prisoners, those in the hood, the barrio, the reservation, the poor, the persecuted, the subjugated, the dominated. And that's the moral and spiritual lens through which I look at the world. And so I look at every bill like that, and I'm glad that he's hitting child poverty in that way. And I hope this is a beginning, not the end. We need to abolish poverty. We need to abolish decrepit schools. We need to abolish mass underemployment and unemployment. We need to abolish any health care system that doesn't include everybody, everybody, no matter who they are. Absolutely. And of course, we know that he's made promises to black Americans in his Lift Every Voice plan. It sounds like you think he's off to a good start. Um, is he on target? And I also want to talk to you about the whole debate over the $15 minimum wage. It didn't go through. Uh, what are your thoughts? No, I think that he's off to a good start, but he's got a long, long way to go. You see, you can't just use Lift Every Voice as if it's some kind of PR strategy. You see, that song comes out of blood sweat, tears, struggle, service, sacrifice. So when you use something like that, lifting every voice, you got to make sure that you are targeting all of those who read Franz Fanon called the wretched of the old worth, those who are experiencing hell and high water right now, those who are catching the most hell. And so he's got a long way to go. And, in, and I think he, we ought to talk seriously about reparations as well, I think is, I think when uh, Sister Yvette Cornell and Brother Tone and Tony Moore and the others uh, talk about reparations, we've got to put that on the agenda too. So you got both on the one hand, relief bill, targeting poverty, reparations on the other hand. We need a renaissance in black America of self-respect, of self-defense, and of self-determination. So do you think we can have economic justice without social justice and vice versa? No, you have to have uh, um, uh, economic justice if you have any kind of justice, because economic justice is about having enough food, enough housing, a job with a living wage, quality education. Everybody needs that. Everybody needs that. And from the very beginning, when the first dignified Africans walked off of that barbaric slave ship on the way to an atrocious slave auction. The problem of black people has been too much poverty, not enough self-love. Too much poverty, <clears throat> not enough self-love. So the economic justice deals with the poverty, but we also need spiritual renaissance. <clears throat> we need self-respect. We need self-worth, self-confidence, a self-belief in ourselves. 
Well, tell us more about what you can, what you say of spiritual renaissance. What does that look like? Describe that to us. Well, in, in many ways, you know, it looks like the best of our music. You know, it looks like a Luther Vandrill solo. It looks like a John Coltrane uh, rendition of uh, Love Supreme. It looks like Curtis Mayfield singing uh, Keep On Pushing. And I must say, you know, I resonate with Brother Weekend in terms of these Grammys. I'm up for a Grammy myself for the Afro-Latin uh, uh, Jazz Orchestra with Arturo Farrell for Four Questions, where we focus on Du Bois. But the Grammys have to be interrogated because Sam Cooke never got one. Curtis Mayfield songs never got one. Sly Stone songs never got one, but Millie Vanilli got two. So we can't we can't invest too much in these Grammys when depended on given the fact that the folks who are giving them miss out on some of our grandest figures who exemplify spiritual and artistic excellence. You don't get deeper than Curtis Mayfield. You don't get deeper than Sly Stone. You don't get deeper than Sam Cooke. We know that. That's what greatness that's what excellence is at its artistic and its spiritual level it gives us a sense of integrity honesty generosity a willingness to serve and that's what you hear in the music of an aretha franklin that's what you hear in gladys knight that's what you hear in sarah vaughn that's what you hear in count basie's band james brown's band that's what you hear in ohio singers playing Heaven must be like this. That is spiritual excellence. It's touching our souls and giving us a sense of belief in ourselves. We thank our great black musicians. They teach us something about what it means to be human, what it means to be black, what it means to be persons who are on the move, tied to something bigger than them. Absolutely. And you know, your first one of your first books, Race Matters, talked about these issues of inequalities. And that was almost three decades ago. And you're still here in the year 2021 talking about music artists who aren't being recognized. We're talking about social injustice, George Floyd trial, these types of things. Did you think back then that all these years later, we would not have proper justice for black people? Well, that's a wonderful question, my dear sister. But I learned some deep wisdom on the chocolate side of Sacramento, California, and Shiloh Baptist Church. Well, Reverend Willoughby Cook used to tell us that we should never be surprised by evil. We should never be paralyzed by despair. And if the kingdom of God is within us and everywhere we go, we ought to leave a little heaven behind. So I always knew there'd be hellish conditions that white supremacies cut so deep in the history of this nation is that it's going to be around a long time. We just have to be fortified in order to come to terms with it. And we have to stay on the battlefield. We have to have consistency. We have to have longevity. And most importantly, we have, we have to have an overflowing of love for black people, for poor people, for working people, as a Christian, for everybody. But I start with the least of these. And so I'm not surprised, uh, you know, anytime you get black movements forward, you get white backlash against you. And anytime poor people moved and the rich act like somehow they are being violated, even though they living like kings and folk down here getting, get, getting crushed like cockroaches, but we still bouncing back. That's the crucial thing. And so I'm blessed to be, uh, to be going, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a blessed, free, Jesus-loving black man in America. And I'm going to go down swinging. I'm going to be faithful unto death before the worms get my body and the Lord gets my soul. Well, we are blessed to have you with us, and I want you to stick around. We've got a quick commercial break, but we want to talk so much more with you. Dr. Cornell West will be right back after this quick break. <laughs> 